Hi, YouTube family. It's been a while since I've given you an update on Australia. We've done America, we've done Ukraine, Russia, but uh, you need to hear the craziness that is continuing in this country. And a lot of people will ask, well, why should I care about Australia? Because Australia really leads the pack. We and New Zealand, we're the experiment of the world. We're the lab of the world. And when the New World Order or the World Economic Forum wants to implement something, they're going to try it on an island first. You realize we're an island. We're disarmed. We are docile. We have a compliant citizenry. And so it's very easy for them to implement something as a test run in New Zealand and in Australia. I want to tell you three shocking developments right now in Australia that people really, you know, they're going to the voting booths right now, but I tell you, it probably doesn't matter. Everyone's going to vote the same way, and it is it is just shocking. But I'm going to give you scriptures about this. You want to stay all the way to the end because I'm going to give you revelation, especially concerning prophecy. But first, let's start with the words of the Lord Jesus Christ and then reveal what's happening, okay, that is so troubling here. In Mark chapter 10, verse 42, the Bible says, Jesus called them to himself. Okay, these are his first leaders. The future of the church is going to depend on these leaders. And he wants to train them in leadership. My goodness, world leaders, I know some of you are listening to me. Please listen to the words of Jesus. This is what he expects of governmental leaders. He said to them, you know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles, lord it over them. And their great ones exercise authority over them. I said politics is like a kind of business. It's the business of power over people. That's how the Gentile nations see it. And Jesus said it like it is. He says that's how they treat government authority. Yet it shall not be so among you. If you want to have a better nation, if you don't want to have a nation that goes down the tube like all these other nations and empires, then here's how to do it. Jesus said, don't do that. But whoever desires to become great, you desire to become elected, you desire to have any power, but whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever of you desires to be first shall be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. You know, I've traveled to over 45 countries, lived in many of them. And you can tell when the leaders love their country, when they make a decision that is for the good of their country. Sometimes you see uh, kings making sacrifice for his country. That's an amazing thing, you know. But those days seem to be gone and people are just now career politicians. What we're seeing right now in Australia is the future. We are the future of many of the nations that's listening to me. We are the future. We're certainly, compared to America, our banking system, for instance, is far more advanced than the American banking system. I mean, it's still common in America for people to write checks. People ask us, like, how do we write a check to help fund your ministry? And I appreciate that so much. But people send, say, a check for $20, $30. And the bank here used to charge $30. Now they're saying they're not even going to accept any check uh, under $100. And I think the fee has gone up. It, it's made it completely impractical. Why is that? Because Australians don't use checks anymore. We rarely ever use a check. If anything, you know, let's say that you have to buy a property, somebody might go and get a bank check. But even then, you don't see that anymore because the lawyers send funds between each other's, you know, trust accounts. So we are way ahead. People here expect instant pay, pay ID. If they know your phone number, they also can pay you instantly. In America, people don't even tell each other their bank account details because there's so much identity theft and fraud. But all of that's going to change. Because Australia, we're the future. We have digital ID. They expect that. You know, America's still debating it, whether it's going to come to pass. It's here on many, many levels, especially in the banking level. So we are the future. So what's going on here? It's going to paint a picture of the future for you, even if you don't care that much about Australia. But I hope you do because you care about us and we are still here and our ministry is still based here. So 
The first thing that's happening is an agriculture bill that uh, has already been debated twice. It's been talked about in our state parliament. That means in the state of Victoria. And it's called the agriculture bill. And there's a post on it on a website called richardsonpost.com. I want to read this to you. The Andrews government, so our premier, kind of the equivalent of the governor of the state, uh, his name is Dan Andrews. Uh, the Andrews government will be coming after agriculture next. So we've just gone through, you know, two years of lockdown. What's next? Well, it looks like an engineered famine. How are they doing it? The Agriculture Legislation Amendment Bill 2022 has had its second reading in Parliament. Biosecurity being the stated reason for changes. Increased enforcement powers, searching of property and persons without warrant, increased fines, what was $1,800, now $10,000 for providing false or misleading info. Landlord consent no longer required for authorized persons to take samples, stock, animals, and documents. Authorized officers no longer required to present identification. Heavy penalties for obstructing entry to property. Sounds like they are getting their ducks lined up, ready to be deployed to shut down farms. Now, part of this bill is also that they want to illegalize you growing your own food. So what are they planning? What is going on here? Sounds crazy, right? It's true. It's all true. And here are just examples from the Agriculture Legislation Amendment Bill 2022. And I could read it to you, but... I'm not going to do it. You can look this up on the internet yourself. It's all there. And what, what would be the point of this? It's control. Because those who rule among the Gentiles lord it over them. And it's a shame, but it's exactly what the Bible predicted in Revelation chapter 6. And I've talked about that so many times. The white horse first, then the red horse of war, then the black horse of famine, then the green horse, which we'll leave that to you to... Uh, discern and interpret what you think that means. But I'm going to go to another scripture just to show you, right? Why are they engineering this? Two years of lockdown, now they want to illegalize food. And they say that if you if you grow your own food or you have food that's not approved of by the government, you will have to pay for them to haul it out, okay? So this is like when you go to trial and they make uh, the person who lost pay fees. You know, you pay not only your lawyer fees, but cover the other guy's lawyer fees. That's what they're saying, basically. They, they, you're all criminals in the eyes of the state. But for growing food? Take a look at this. In Revelation chapter 13, people ask, you know, where is it in the Bible when you say there's going to be a global government? Well, here's one of the scriptures. Revelation 13 introduces the Antichrist and also the empire or the beast system, as the Bible calls it, which he rules over. Take a look at this. I'm going to start from the top. I stood on the sand of the sea, John is speaking, Jesus revealed this to him, 2,000 years ago. I saw a beast, okay, the animals, you got to go all the way back to prophetic scriptures, the animals represent kingdoms. So to people who are Bible unfamiliar or Bible illiterate, they don't know what it means. They're like, what, what animals are you talking about? These are not, uh, you know, animals in a zoo. This is a symbol of an empire. And all these symbols are explained. So they happen to be explained in Daniel chapter 7. So those who read Daniel 7 know right away, oh, these symbols in Revelation 13 match Daniel 7. It's familiar. So you got to be born again. you got to be a Christian and read the Bible so the Word of God makes sense. The Bible is a, you know, in a way it, it blesses friends and it confuses its enemies. It's designed that way. So how can one thing bless one group of people and yet confuse another group of people? It's a supernatural thing. It's an amazing thing. All right, so he says, I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. The seas, the, the people, okay? It's another symbol in uh, Revelation. Having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns, ten crowns, and on his heads, a blasphemous name. Now, the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet was like the feet of a bear, and his mouth was like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. So some empire is coming, which has the elements of three previous mega empires that ruled the world. 
What were they? If you listen to American preachers for the past 30, 40 years, they will misinterpret this based on their own Eurocentric, American-centric uh, interpretation. So I, I know what they are. I can say it because I've listened to you know all the preachers for years and years. And I, I respect, by the way, I must say, when I bring a slight adjustment to prophecy, I'm not criticizing people who came before me. I thank God for them. But it doesn't mean they knew everything because we're getting more and more light. And we don't disparage them. We thank God for their ministry. They walked in the light that they know at that time. Okay, so Americans used to say, if you see the lion, well, the lion represents England and the British Empire. Clearly, it's that because the emblem of the queen has a, has a lion on it. Well, that's nonsense. That's not the way you interpret the Bible. You let the Bible interpret the Bible. You take hermeneutics, you take any Bible interpretation class, they will teach you that, and they apply that for any topic in the Bible until end time prophecy. Then they fall right off a cliff. I don't understand why people do that. People do that with healing, right? So whatever subject they, they're not sure about, all the rules of Bible interpretation apply until that topic you don't like, and then whew, fall off a cliff. No, just keep using the same basic principles of interpreting the Bible. A lion is interpreted in Daniel 7 as Babylon. And if you look at the gates of Babylon, yes, the lions are actually there on the gates. But you and I may not remember that because we don't live at that time anymore. This is 500 years before Jesus Christ came. So it made sense to Daniel and it would have made sense to John but 2,000 years later, we don't know Babylon, so we just look for something in the news or in our hist history or our culture and say, well, that applies. It does not work that way. Please don't abuse the Bible in that way. So he says he sees this beast, this government. It looks like three of the previous empires in our history. The leopard is Greece. The leopard was defined as Greece. Um, his feet were like the feet of a bear. Well, what do American preachers say? The bear has to be Russia. And they say, there it is. You know, Russia is going to invade Israel because there's a bear there. Nope, nonsense. You watch. You watch. Russia is not going to invade Israel. Uh, Russia doesn't even want a, a wider conflict. This is war propaganda that's, you know, trying to drum up everybody to, to go and send money, $40 billion to Ukraine. Russia just wants to protect its borders like any one of our countries would, unless you're an island like Australia. Everybody wants to protect their borders. They don't want guns and weapons pointing at them very near their borders. So it's actually quite reasonable. Not that war is good, not that what Putin has done is justified, but it is understandable, right? He's, he's He loves his country. He loves his people. He's trying to protect his own people. And there are really Nazis in the Ukraine. People don't seem to understand that because it doesn't get reported enough. All right. But it's in, in fact, it, the concentration camps or the, the training camps, sorry, the training camps for Nazis, uh, the largest ones are still in the Ukraine, in all of Europe. So why don't we ever hear that? All right. So the beast looks like a leopard, right? Has the feet of a bear. Who's the bear? What's well, Medo-Persia. In the book of Daniel, it defines it. It's Medo-Persia. It's the kingdom or the empire that comes after Babylon. All right. And then he speaks like uh, the lion. So today, the, the lion would be smack in the middle of the Middle East. All right. That's where Babylon was. So somehow this beast system uh, incorporates many of the elements of the Middle East. And these are Middle Eastern empires. And the dragon who's Satan gives his power to this beast system. And I saw one of its heads as it had been mortally wounded. Okay, so the head would be the head of state. We still say that. We say the head of state, but the Bible language says the head of this beast was uh, mortally wounded. His deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. Now, here's the amazing thing. There's so much there. We saw this with Zelensky. As soon as they said, there were assassination attempts on his life. And we don't know that that was true. There was no evidence provided whatsoever. But let's say that the news always tells you the truth. What happened? Everybody started lifting him up as a hero, as this great hero. Now, one or two weeks before that news, nobody even knew the name Zelensky. Suddenly, everybody followed him, worshipped him, called him an amazing hero. He hadn't done anything yet. And you could see 
later on that he was just like a, staged all of these, you know, photo ops and media ops. It's amazing. It, where was the danger to his life? So, and then you see Nancy Pelosi, you know, he, she's so afraid of protesters that came to Congress in January, but he, she's not afraid to fly over to the Ukraine and, and again, take a photo op in a supposed war zone. Things just, you know, you got to add things up yourself and just ask yourself the right questions. So the world, all the world marvel and follow the beast. So we've got a formula in Zelensky. If somebody is, you know, relatively unknown, yet he gets wounded. And then he's lifted up in the media as a hero. You can see how quickly the world will follow this person. And this person is going to be the Antichrist. So we have a template. It's already been played out in front of us at least once. Verse 4. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast saying, Who is like the beast? And who is able to make war with him? Did you hear the language of that? Because what's happening in Australia right now is following this script. See, I always thought, and I had been taught for years, that the Antichrist will come and he will, at the, at the, the, the force of government power, you know, uh, with the, with the barrel of a gun, would force or coerce people to accept his authority. But what the Bible reveals is totally different. It reveals that we will live in an age where people are such lover of themselves, lovers of money, lovers of entertainment. They're so narcissistic that they're not being forced to follow evil. They are voluntarily giving themselves to evil. They vote for evil. They acquiesce to evil. They are complicit in the evil. And they even think that that's virtue signaling. Not only do they do evil, right? Not only did the German Nazis commit atrocities, they did it feeling self-righteous about it. And this is the scariest thing of all, because I can tell you the, the, the unimaginable horrors of this kind of food control and the power that we would be giving this, this one uh, state dictator. Let me read to you the rest of this article. Food riots are spreading throughout the world. And the war in Ukraine has disrupted food production in one of the world's bread baskets. People in China are starving due to the government's brutal COVID lockdown. Yet people who are trying to grow their own food are having their crop destroyed. This is literally what the Agriculture Legislation Amendment Bill 2022 looks like. It looks as though as Victorians get very, very hungry over the next year, the government is going to use the pretext of biosecurity to destroy people's homegrown food supply. Hollywood has bred pacifism into our people for a long time. A lot of us think that all we have to do is grow our own food and we'll be set. We'll also need to defend our food supply and a network of solid friends to help us. Time to tribe up. And this is why I say we need a tribe. You need a tribe. And the Discover Church is a tribe. We're a tribe of international people networked all across the world. It's amazing the amount of talents that we have. And every time I come on to prayer or care group or, or do you know a live service, I'm just amazed at the talents that are here. I ask you, tribe up. Come and join us. Come and join Discover Church Online. It's as cheap as $20 a month. People pay more than that for one single meal. And this is to fund a ministry that you love that's getting the word of God out. And we're living in perilous times. We're living in times that, that have been foretold in the Bible. We need to tribe up. We ought to work together. All right? So when you come on, I tell you, there's so many things happening. You'll get lots of good feeding, all uncensored, and you'll make friends. We've had people make friends with each other. All right. What else is going on that, that is just unbelievable in Australia? We are the future for many of the Western world's countries. Uh, an, yet another crazy thing going on. Here, the Conservative Party is called the Liberal Party. Now, the Conservative Party is voting to kick out a winnable candidate who is pro-life. So we're in the middle of election right now, and they're going to kick out a sitting MP, obviously a winnable guy. Why? Because he's pro-life. 
All that's left now for Christians are the independents and the minor parties. You can look them up yourself. So here's a headline from The Guardian, okay? Dated May 16. Victorian Liberal Party seeks to expel Bernie Finn over anti-abortion comments. The state MP will face motion to expel him from parliamentary Liberal Party after he said that he was praying for an abortion ban in Australia. And you know this came directly out of the leak from Roe v. Wade, right? Uh, Bernie Finn made these comments on Facebook after the leak of a draft decision showing the U.S. Supreme Court may overturn Roe v. Wade. And then the left has totally driven misinformation about this, and yet you don't see the fact checkers doing anything. Ro overturning Roe v. Wade doesn't ban abortion. It kicks the decision back to the states so that the people's will would be done state by state. What could be more democratic, right? And if you don't like a certain state, thank God in America, you can go to another state. And that's why this is huge migration to, you know, Texas and Florida and in America right now. So amazing. The supposed, you know, left side and right side are in lockstep with a globalist antichrist agenda. And this is what the Bible predicted. Such global power, but it's not going to be taken by coercion. I think the scariest, most troubling thing is, it's the people that want this. They want the tyranny. They want to control. They want to cede their power over to these unaccountable people. It's amazing. But you know, it also tells me it's not the authority that has the power. It's the people that has the power. And so what is it that's holding back all this evil? The Bible says, we, the body of Christ, the light of the world, the restrainer, filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, we are the ones that are keeping the Antichrist back. So the power, don't think of the power being with some top echelon elites. They can't do anything without us. So we have the power. And as long as we're alive, as long as we're kicking and breathing, we're going to restrain evil. We're going to preach the truth. We're going to take the midst of darkness out of people's head. We're going to open the blind eyes. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. We, you and I, have power, but we got to work together. Stop working apart. Stop tearing each other up. All right? We've got to work together. So this is the second troubling thing that's happening. The third troubling thing that's happening, and I think Americans know this, but we were advanced because in America, Joe Biden had actually uh, proposed a new treaty with the WHO so that they can be the global government over health. You know, again, health, biosecurity, anything related to do with our bodies, they want to give the power over to an unelected uh, international body. Now, Biden did, did that in January, and then it was only revealed in April. And now the vote's coming up between May, I think, 22 to 28, the vote's coming up in the in the United Nations. But in Australia, our Prime Minister was privy to this long ago. And you can listen to him speak in his own words the fact that he had already planned to sell Australia out. And this issue is not even being debated. Uh, I tweeted this out. The idea of ceding national sovereignty to an unelected, unaccountable, supranational body that failed to prevent the spread of a flu virus, suppressed existing therapies, and enriched billionaires. Such an idea would have once been a career-ending proposal for any politician, but not for Scott Morrison. He believes that, that he's been empowered. He answers to a, another authority, not the will of the people, not the Constitution of Australia. So he is not, in my definition of conservative, a true liberal, a true conservative. Okay? This is classical liberal. What is he doing there? And how many people have believed that the liberal is on the right and the labor is on the left, and then you find out again and again they're together? And I think this is where we have to pray for the independents and the minor parties to hold the balance of power. That's what happens in Australia. You know, Australia, we, we just buy two cars, red car or blue car. We need some other colors. We need yellow and gray and silver and gold and all sorts of other colors. So these are the minor parties. And thank God, under our Constitution, we still have the possibility to hold evil back, both through preaching the truth, through praying, and also through good leaders, good people who love the country, getting some political position. 
And that's what's happening right now in the next election. We're going to see some of these guys win. Uh, there's, a, I think, a statesman in, I think this is in the Netherlands. She uh, tweeted out this. The World Health Organization is committing a power grab. And unless we want a post-democratic world government, we need to stop them. If we don't stop the treaty, the WHO power grab will quite literally mean the end of democracy and the beginning of a global technocracy. So if this happens, if this treaty really is passed, approved, and enforced, none of these elections matter anymore. What does it matter whether you vote in right or left, blue or red? Who cares? Because the WHO can superimpose its will at any time on all of these nations. That's what it means. It's, it's the end of democracy. So if you want to see Scott Morrison, our current Australian Prime Minister, say it in his own words, listen to this. The World Health Organization yeah. meets on May 22, and on the agenda is a potential pandemic treaty which would allow the mm. WHO to direct countries in how they control pandemics. Mm. Would you consider signing up to that and handing over any controls to the organization? I have always been supportive right from the outset and was criticized heavily I stress heavily, mocked in fact by the Labor Party for saying the WHO should have those powers and those authorities to be able to go and deal with pandemic situations because we all know what happened at the start of this pandemic. Uh, we, well, the problem is we don't know what happened at the start of this pandemic and I was the one calling to ensure that we had an independent process to understand what happened so it couldn't be repeated. So I have been in the vanguard of those moves internationally to ensure that there is greater protection for world health, to ensure that uh, those world health authorities can come and understand what's going on and be able to assist countries to be able to prevent the spread and outbreak of major infectious diseases. Uh, now we'll look at the text of all of that, but we have been amongst the countries that have been positive about these sorts of changes, have to look closely at what the detail is in these things, as you always must. But the idea that countries can just say, no, you can't come in and have a look at a pandemic that's about to break out and actually affect the, the public health and the economy of the entire world, as we saw with this pandemic, then I think it's only sensible that that's an area of international cooperation um, that is very, very important, and I've been consistent on that. And remember, the Labor Party mocked me for saying that that was a good idea. So there, you heard it uh, in his own words, in his from his own mouth. You heard Scott Morrison say he's always been for this, giving the WHO all you know our sovereignty, ceding it away. Now, if you wonder what it's going to look like, don't worry. You you don't need to wonder. You already have Shanghai. Shanghai has been in lockdown for almost 60 days, certainly more than 60 days by the time you hear this video. Imagine that. You cannot leave your apartment. Pets are dying. They say that in the middle of the night, pets are screaming and howling. The dogs are howling. The cats are screaming. And then the dogs are chasing and eating the cats because the pets cannot stay inside of a 50-story high-rise apartment. So... And people are just going insane. They're going nuts. And they, they never expected that this would happen. But for biosecurity, they all have to comply. Look at what the Bible says. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves and lovers of money, boasters, proud. Man, I've never seen a more proud people, even within inside the church. Proud. You know, people say, well, I'm not proud. Well, you know, pride is very subtle. I I've done a whole sermon on pride. Pride will lead you to destruction. Pride will lead you to a fall. And there's a lot more pride going on in the body of Christ than you think. I was dealing with a, a young person who uh, I recommended a book to. And he said, oh, well, you know, this book, I, I basically know everything in it. You know, I I if you just read one book, then it's like you've read all the books. And I say, you know, I don't feel that way. I don't feel that way because when I read a book or when I listen to a sermon, I don't ask myself, have I heard this before? You know, I'm a pretty good student. I've heard most things before, but I don't ask myself, do I, have I heard it before? Do I know it already? I ask myself, do I do it? Am I doing, am I living what this messenger of God is telling me? And a lot of times I would say, boy, I sure fall short of that standard. I have a long way to go 
And I'm so appreciative to hear the same thing again and again. As long as it's the truth, as long as it's the word of God, give it to me again and again, right? I don't say I, I ate, you know, a, a great steak last month. I'm not going to eat it again. No, it, it, if it's good, give it to me again. I would love to hear the truth preached to me again and again. So I'm not seeking for always a new thing. And I appreciate that a lot of our people love our ministry because they are learning something new. But eventually, at some point, you follow me long enough, you're going to hear me say the same thing because it's the truth. And we should have a humble heart. Like one expression I love the Americans say is eat humble pie. Well, that's a great expression. That does not exist in Australia. That's not a, a saying I've ever heard any Australian say in the past 20 years. So it's a great saying among Americans. We in the body of Christ need to eat some humble pie. And we need to be appreciative of the word of God and any ministry that's preaching the word of God. Because a lot of ministries, you know, I, I hear your comments. You know, they say, well, why aren't they preaching end time? Any prophecy? Uh, why are they not? Well, you got the answer. They need to eat humble pie and they need to come back and preach the full counsel of the word of God. And none of us do it perfectly. So we got to keep eating more humble pie so that we can submit ourselves to the authority of God's word. Um, I want to give you another scripture, okay? First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Again, this is like Revelation 13, where there's a prediction of a, a great global empire so great it's got the characteristics of three of the ancient empires combined with the power of the dragon, which is the devil. Wow. And the whole world goes worshiping after this person when he gets more wounded, but he recovers from it. That's the prediction. It's all there, guys. It's all there in the Bible. How could the Bible know all this unless God himself had written it? There's no other book in the world like that. But this is like Revelation 13 because... What Paul is saying is, listen carefully. In the latter times, some will depart from the faith. Did you hear that? Some who? Some Christians, some churchgoers will do what? Depart from the faith. That means it's voluntary. Nobody pointed the barrel of the gun on their head and said, you have to depart from the faith. You have to recant. They said, no, we voluntarily leave the church. Have you seen that? People said, during COVID, we leave the church, we're not coming back. And this is why I say, pastors everywhere, get online, use social media. This is what God has blessed us with. We got over 50 million views in YouTube. Why? Because God prepared us before COVID. And I'm saying, some people leave because the church is not feeding them. Some people uh, uh, leave for a good reason. All right? So these are not the ones that are doing it like Paul said to Timothy. But... If you can't find a good church, come to Discover Church Online. Get the experience. Get the fellowship. Get the mentoring and the Word of God. Boy, I, I want to tell you, I, I don't do this enough. I'm going to read to you some of the wonderful testimonies that we get. Listen to this. All right, I'm going to close with this. Pastor Steve, uh, through online church, feeds my soul. This is Jacqueline Johnson. I have learned more by watching him since 2017 than I did attending church three times a week my whole life. Boy, this is a very faithful person, three times a week, right? If it had not been for seeing a clip of Discover Church on Facebook, I would not be attending church regularly. At the church I attended in my hometown, I never felt a part of it. I always felt like I was being judged and that I couldn't speak up or ask questions, or you can ask questions with me. It was very robotic. And the prayer that we have in our online church is so spirit-filled that my mother, without knowing I had requested prayer for her health, began to feel better overnight and even commented to me that she had felt better. She had felt better than, had, than she had in months and she didn't know why. The leaders take time to reach out to me personally and invite me to take part in different prayer sessions. Well, we have it every day, by the way. All of you are welcome. 
And if you're in U.S. time zone, we're going to start a U.S. time zone per group as well. That will be part of the USA Church. All right. So uh, take part. They invite me to take part in different prayer sessions and activities they need help with to grow the online church, whether it be through Discover Church or USA Church. I was never asked to be part of the ministry at my in-person church. I just really feel a sense of belonging in my online church that I never felt before. I love that. It's not It's not uh, my online church. It's her online church. You see, God is doing something. And we're living in such perilous times that you can be in a lot of... You know, I ask people all the time, what's your church like? And I want people to go to physical church. You must understand that. I love the church. I want to support the church. I have sent so many faithful, baptized, tithe-paying church members to churches all over the world. I love that. But if you're in a church that you say is dead and dry, get out. Don't stay in a dead and dry church and don't let the devil disfellowship you and disconnect you. Because why? We're in perilous times. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, that you don't, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together and so much more, the more as you see the day approaching. Don't forsake that. And you don't have to anymore because we can have fellowship together, you know, in 24-hour church. I'm going to give you one more uh, testimony. I just got this. This is from David, David Williams. He said, and I quote, The greatest problem I find in American churches is that the sermons are all alike. Surely, there is a need for milk for the new newly borns. I was blessed to be under John Wimber back in the 1990s. While there was milk in the Sunday sermons, there were hints of deeper evening classes. Back then, those classes' purpose was teaching spiritual warfare. That is where God called me into deliverance. When we lost John, the vineyard movement, as it had been, became just another milk delivery service. I sought many deeper churches until I saw there were none. That didn't stop the Holy Spirit from continuing my education by learning from the trials that he had arranged for me, trials that answered the deep why he had put in my gut. I'm 89 years old. You're never too old for online church. I'm 89 years old now and putting finishes finishing touches on a book that that the Lord willing will soon be on Amazon. That's great. We got so many talents in our church. I find that you also keep me abreast of another set of whys. What is really going on in the world today? Well, yeah, that's that's what the Holy Spirit led me to tell you. What's going on in Australia? Because it's going to be the future. What's What's experimented in New Zealand and Australia is going to be the future in America, Canada, England, South Africa, and the rest of the world. That is why I was glad to find a teacher who could teach me something that I'd not learned hundreds of times in churches in the USA. Praise our Lord for using an online church to spread his word. Amen. Amen. So online church is a vital necessity in these perilous times. I am so glad that we can reach out to you. You're not obligated to join, but if it's in your heart to become an active member, if you'd like to support us, the easiest way is to go to discoverchurch.online. And we ask you, join usachurch.online, okay? And you can give tax-deductible gifts only at usachurch.online. I really pray that we'll see many, many of the YouTubers, many, many more of the Telegram followers to come and be an active part. We love to see you. And you will get to meet me. You'll get to speak with me. Uh, I am not far away. I really love the church. I really love pastoring people. I care about you very much. So, But it's more than me. It's a lot of other wonderful talents and a lot of prayer warriors here. So if you're sick, if you're in need, come. At least get prayed for and see the power of God in your life. Okay? He's not far away. He really loves you. And he knows what's going on. He knew the end from the beginning and he's warning us. So get ready and be prepared. Okay? God bless you. Pray for us in Australia. If you can remember Australia, I know it's we seem so far away. Don't forget us here in Australia. Australia needs to be defended. Freedom is very precious here, and there are wonderful Christians here. All right, so we're committed to seeing Australia regain her freedom. Glory to God. 